Welcome back to the bench. It's about time for another video. And today we're going to talk about audio amplifier dynamic power. Audio amplifiers are normally measured using what's known as continuous power. And at least in the United States, back in 1974, I believe it was, the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, came up with standards for measuring and advertising the power of audio amplifiers such as stereo receivers and things like that. The reason for doing that is, well, let's just say that manufacturers were pretty liberal on how they measured audio amplifier power, and you got some pretty crazy figures in some cases. Most of them weren't too off the wall, but some of them kind of got a little crazy with the power measurements. So the FTC stepped in and mandated standards on measuring audio amplifiers using a continuous sine wave test at you know various frequencies. There's a, a lot to it. You can look it up on how it's supposed to be set up, measured, and advertised. But anyway, we're going to talk about dynamic power. Well, I've drawn a little diagram here. The waveform here is the sine wave output from an audio amplifier. And at the top here I have the supply rails shown. Most hi-fi solid state audio amplifiers have a dual supply with a plus rail voltage, the common zero, and a negative rail voltage. When the amplifier is tested with a continuous signal near the maximum output just before clipping. Like I always do in my other videos, I test with a continuous signal and I adjust so I get the maximum output before clipping. What that does with a non-regulated supply, it pulls the supply rails down, which is indicated with the dotted line. So if you just turn the amplifier on and it's sitting idle, you'll just have this higher rail here indicated in the solid lines. But again, when the amplifier is under load, it pulls the supply rails down. So you don't get as much power from the amplifier. And that's good because it shows you what the amplifier is capable of when it's driven with a continuous tone or signal. Now the thing with music is it's not always a continuous signal. It's usually a lower level signal with larger transients thrown in, such as from a drum beat or a loud attack as it's called of instruments, for example in a classical or orchestral type music, which uh, creates a sudden demand of power for the amplifier to put out. Now if the power supply is designed well and uses large filter capacitors, the capacitors will tend to keep that voltage up higher during short demanding transients. And you'll get more power than you do from when you test it with a continuous signal. And that's what I want to demonstrate by setting up a test with my little amplifier here. So I have here my Radio Shack plastic project box do-it-yourself audio amplifier that I built quite a while ago. And believe it or not, this is my main music listening amplifier. Now, not much to it. It's rated around 15 watts per channel. I will recheck that. Uh, having the voltage set at exactly 120 volts from my Variac, so we can get a accurate base measurement here. And this amplifier does not have a built-in supply. It has an external supply. I did that because I wanted to have this made to be portable where I could um, hook up a battery pack to it and then I can take it outside or something like that. So just a portable design. Anyway, let me get it all set up here and we'll begin testing. Okay, I have the amplifier set up here. 
using non-inductive 4 ohm loads using 4 ohms because that's what I made the amplifier to be used with you could use 8 ohms too but meant for 4 ohm loads so I have the scope set up and we'll get a baseline continuous power measurement here my uh, line voltage does go a little bit high it runs 123 to 124 so I'm on the variac here and I adjusted it for 120 but you see it's high now but when I turn the amplifier on put a signal out into those loads it actually pulls the voltage down so I need to compensate for that so I'll drop that down to 120 and that's probably as close as I'm going to get so when I turn the signal off the voltage will bounce back up okay let's get a baseline measurement here so I'll adjust that there's clipping you see it's bouncing because it's an unregulated supply and the filter capacitors flatten it out but there's still going to be some of the ripple from the supply getting through but you know that'll clean up when we pull it back out of clipping which right around there should do so we're getting 7.37 volts so 7.37 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms gives us 13.57 watts, about 13.6 watts. So that's our baseline. So now to capture the dynamic power measurement, I want to set up the scope for a single capture. So it'll trigger off when it detects the waveform going in. And I'll have to do a few adjustments to get the proper value because, you know, when you're doing that, you, you can't do it while it's live. You have to do a single capture and check the level and adjust it and so on and so forth to get the maximum unclipped waveform. And this type of dynamic measurement is going to be from zero signal to full output. So we'll see how much dynamic power we have in that situation okay I got a pretty good capture the music player kind of ramps the signal in a little bit it, it's not a full start so you know it may not be as high as the amplifier could go but I have to live with that I wanted to do a lower frequency like 40 Hertz but the way the music player ramps in with the tone it, it just doesn't work out very well but as you can see, we start out with a very large waveform. And as the capacitors in the the filter capacitors in the power supply discharge, see how it starts shrinking down and clipping? And that's the end of our capture there. But we dropped considerably. So let me set up the markers and get a measurement. Okay, I set up the cursors. Unfortunately, it won't go any higher than this point or lower than this point. You can kind of see it's lost in the text there, but almost to the peak. It stopped short, just shy of the peak, but it's near enough. We'll run with that. So I'm getting cursor A at 13.5 volts, cursor B at negative 13.5 volts. Now we have to convert that into an RMS value, so multiply that by 0 0.707 gives us 9.5445 volts. I'll square that divided by our load impedance and 22.77 watts. So the amplifier has quite a bit more power than with the continuous sine wave. Of course again this is dynamic power so let's adjust this and scroll that over you can see how it rolled off there as the filter capacitors discharged 
So what gives us this power? It's really all about the power supply. Because the power supply voltage collapses under load, it reduces the power available, or I'm sorry, the supply voltage to the amplifier, which causes it to give us less output. If I had a better power supply with this amplifier, you know, for example, let's say I used a regulated supply that kept the voltage higher, then I would get a higher continuous power output. But you rarely see regulated supplies with power amplifiers. There are some out there, I know, but generally you do not see that. It's better to design your amplifier with the power supply and you know give it as much current and voltage as it needs to give you a good continuous power output and not worry about the dynamic power. It's always going to be more. You might have heard dynamic power expressed in decibels. Well, to do that, you just take the dynamic power divided by the continuous power. So we had 22.77 divided by I forget now, 13.5 we'll say. Now you press the log button on your calculator and then multiply that by 10. It is power so you use 10 and, and not 20. So this amplifier has a dynamic power headroom as it's called of 2.27 decibels. Now, if I didn't say so earlier, there's not really a standard way of measuring dynamic power. And I had to use 1 kilohertz because of uh, limitations in my equipment. But had I used a lower frequency, you know, the sine wave would have stayed higher longer, which would have pulled the voltage on the filter caps down quicker. And it may not have gotten as high as value measuring with the lower frequency. So that's something to keep in mind, but you can see here, this is a one kilohertz tone. You know, it stayed up pretty well for a few cycles, but you know, here it's starting to drop off. I use 10,000 microfarad filter caps in this supply. The transformer, which is also part of the equation, is a 2 amp transformer. It's a center tap 25.2 volts 2 amp transformer so if I had a larger transformer it would also help to hold the rails up higher. But when you do that you're looking at more cost but with a music signal and dealing with the dynamics of the music you're always going to get more power from the amplifier with music anyway so you know not always the best idea to build out your power supply really large unless your amplifier is going to live playing deep bass notes all the time. You might consider building out the power supply under that condition. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.